Hey folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to a brand new game of Through the Ages, a story, a new story of civilization. A fantastic board game, which has digital adaptations for mobile, and now on Steam, and I'm so happy. I like, I can't stop playing this game on mobile, and that's despite the fact that it takes like a thousand years for the AI to play its turn when you're playing on hard AI, um, because my phone is a little slow, or the mobile version is a little slow or something. So anyway, I'm very happy for the, the um, PC version, even though I keep getting my ass kicked by this AI on hard. Okay, so this is the setup phase. We're second player, so we've got two pips to choose from. I could grab Moses or the Hanging Gardens or something, but I kind of feel like grabbing a couple of rich lands might be the strongest way to go about it. Cultural heritage just gives me a little bit of science, right? Pyramids might be available conceivably by my turn. Most likely yellow will take it as part of its normal turn. Um, yeah, I think a couple of rich lands is going to be okay here. We get some discounts to our early setup over there. I might actually get a third farm as well as a third mine. The third mine's kind of a no-brainer. The third farm, I don't know if that's going to really translate to a lot of extra growth. Conceivably, Moses might still be available if uh, yellow doesn't pick it. That actually might be a little stronger. Alex the Great, Marabi. Yeah, I don't know what kind of leader. You're picking the... Okay, you're working on the Hanging Gardens. Oh, oh, Red must have gone and spent all three on the Pyramid choice. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Very, very good, uh, strong choice. Nothing wrong with that. All right, Moses is there for cheaper growth. So Alexander the Great, plus one military strength. Hammurabi is, may use one of your military actions as civil action. That's pretty good. Double political action. That's actually really good because I don't really care about my military actions early on. Hammurabi might be the stronger pick. Especially if I use the, uh, the rich land to get an extra farm. You know what? I think we're going to use you, and we'll deploy you right away. And, yeah, we'll go ahead and build the extra mine. That'll give me enough production so I can get philosophy next. But I can also, um, if I have the pop, I could build the extra farm here. Now, normally, you want to keep an idle worker here because there's a chance that there'll be an event that pops up that gives you the ability to build a temple for free if you have an idle worker. Um, but red can't trigger it. Yellow, yellow could by playing a military card on yellow's turn. The odds are kind of low for that. I think I'm going to take the risk. Get the extra farm, which I don't normally build here. Um, but a little extra food, a little extra growth might be worth the investment. And uh, and that's it. That's with using this, so I can't grab anything else. Amurabi is already let me convert one dude over, although I had to pick him up. And, and play him to do that. But um, yeah, so he'll sort of have paid for himself by next turn and maybe give me a little edge going forward. Again, assuming that we don't value the, um, the military actions as much, and I don't, especially this early. I mean, it's nice to pick up a few cards, but I don't know. Bump it though. Now we're not starting on a wonder yet. And there's some good ones. On the other hand, just getting your base production up is good, although, I do tend to focus a lot of production, and then I sort of end up uh, often fall behind on the early. Um, I guess sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> culture growth, which can kind of bite me in the ass. Um, I would love to play wealthy territory here, just to you know get me plus one culture right now. But I don't want to generate trigger the event that could uh, be the free temple thing, so I may as well just hold on to that since I'm not going to be forced to discard it anyway. Library of Alexandria you may have one extra civil card, military card. Having the extra cards doesn't matter that much. A little passive science and culture is pretty sexy. The Great Wall, plus one strength for each infantry and artillery. Um, so that costs a total of nine to build. Alexandria only costs six to build. Great Wall does give the happiness, which there's nothing wrong with that. Now, this is a um, an antiquities wonder. So I have to make sure to build it before age two ends. Great Wall, I'd have a lot more time to build it. Be nice if Irrigation and Iron were over here. I don't really think I want to spend three civil actions picking them up, but it's certainly kind of tempting. I mean, one thing I'm going to do is certainly this. Another thing I have to do is get an extra Philosophy Lab so that we can keep our science rate up appropriately. Although now all of a sudden we've got some unhappiness. Never mind. Okay, get the pop to keep it idle. Don't deploy it. Hope we get the free freaking um, uh, happiness option for the temple. 
Maybe I grab the Great Wall. The military strength could actually be very nice. Um, urban, urban growth level 1 is stronger. Uh, oh yeah, and because of Hammurabi, I could still grab something over here. Cartography is nice. I don't have any other tech accruement going on. Yeah, delaying this really is going to delay my science a lot. I think it's actually fine for me to pick up cartography. We won't be able to play it next turn, but... Our production is going to go into the wall. Which we're basically two turns from finishing. Yeah, I don't know. It might be okay. Mm, come on, temple event. You can do it. Working on this pyramid with engineering genius. Yeah, that would be a really good card for us to have. Christopher Columbus. Yellow. Did load an event. Uh, each civilization gains some minerals. Okay, not too shabby. I mean, it helps everyone equally. Um, irrigation and iron. If I can just scoop both those up. I mean, sometimes I skip these early techs and just go for the next tier one. But I think because we're a little bit happiness capped because of how things are going to go, I think we are going to be focusing... Uh, he picked up your uh, iron. He already has irrigation. If we've got irrigation, we could probably just have two workers in the farms instead of the three we've got now. All right, politics. Load up wealthy territory. Come on, temple event. Temple event. Hmm, food. Hmm. Code of Laws is fantastic. Alchemy, you know what? I think we take the alchemy route. For a petter lab. Uh, don't bother with urban growth right now. Get some happy there. Um, actually, urban growth. Hold on. I could go do this. Do that. Still have an idle worker. Start to accrue a little bit of culture. There's some events here that can do things for, like, discontent workers. I don't know if that's one of the antiquities one or something that someone can load in over there. But it's certainly a thing that can start to develop. I, while I would love Code of Laws and a few other things, we've got we've got some tech things here. I don't want to overload it on tech things, so I think the right thing to do is to spend probably two actions working on this. Like that. And turn. Uh... Still get corruption? You've been spending four there? Really? It feels a little weird. We spent minerals there. I suppose, okay, if I don't use the urban growth card. All right, if I just do this and then that. There we go, no corruption. We can just save that for later. Yeah, that's going to be okay. Because, I mean, why lose two minerals to, to that? Next turn, we can plop down the alchemy and have enough production to go and upgrade the labs to that. Get the science rolling. So we got a little bit of everything kind of going through. Our military is only one. Yellow could try some aggression towards me, which would be unpleasant. But assuming that doesn't happen on this turn, uh, having the Great Wall up does make our military scale up a lot faster, which is going to be nice. We might be able to pick up that Monarchy card. We might be forced to do the Revolution to trigger the Monarchy, although that's not necessarily the worst. And interestingly enough, with Hammurabi, uh, even after Revolution, we should be able to take one Civil action. Oh, everyone gets a little bit of science. I don't know if that changes anything. There's another Iron coming up. Getting a little later. Sometimes I do like to skip the Iron and just pick up the Coal. mostly depends on how many yellow cards I've been able to pick up to make things cheaper. Uh, I can't plunder. I'm just going to skip this phase. There's two Antiquities cards. There could still be a free lab triggering at some point. Uh, we could pick up the Swordman as well. Okay. I think the thing is, we have no choice, I think, but to develop alchemy. And probably... Probably just upgrade for now. If I grab Monarchy, I can still take an action thanks to Hammurabi. Uh, we 
we'd still get waste. Yeah, let me take this up, do that, and again, not use urban growth. Or build a new lab using urban growth. That works out very nicely. No wasted stuff. Still gotta finish this wall at some point. Next turn, we can, what, next turn? I believe we'll be able to monarchy via revolution. It'll still cost us two science. We'll be down to three. Oh, I won't be able to cartography, but I should be able to pick up a card or grow or pop or something like that. Although, again, we're vulnerable to aggression, but I don't really see something else that we could have done to bypass this stuff. It's kind of annoying. Like, I feel like if we were to bulk ourselves up not to be vulnerable to aggression, we'd be slowing ourselves down too much in other ways. But the problem, the question comes up of how bad is any aggression going to be, if there is any. Red couldn't have done it because we could have discarded a card to defend. But yellow certainly can, because there's no way we can discard enough to defend against yellow's aggression. If he has aggro cards. He's got three cards in hand. Oh, looks like not. Okay, good. I'm sure if he had one, he would have done it. He must have just not had something. Fighting band. Tactic. He's getting more powerful. Picked up the warfare as well. Oh yeah, and he's got his, um, his swordman as well. And there's no new military cards showing itself here for me to grab either. Throw down immigration, trigger development of warfare, a free warrior. I will take it. No, we're still not in a hot spot here. Um, there's no mutual tactics I can grab right now. We can get a little bit more strength by finishing this, but we can't actually finish it. Yeah, let's revolt monarchy. And then because of Hammurabi, I can still pick up something here. The code of laws is very tempting. I could actually develop it next turn. Huh. I can take um, Joan of Arc for cheaper here. She actually gives me culture while she's running as well. I can replace her next turn. You know, I think I like that. I know the Code of Laws is very attractive. But we can get a little bit more strength, a little more control over the events. Uh, and yeah, we get waste. All right, let's, let's do this instead. We'll need, we'll need the people to go and maybe recruit some more troops, if nothing else. But yeah, at least we're getting the aggression cards. Maybe other people aren't. Still not worried about red. Um, we can do something for discounted right now. Uh, including developing cartography, which is equal to plus one military strength over here. I think that's the way to do it. There you go. Plus if a colonization event gets triggered, we're in a slightly better position. We're still three apart over here. Um, and we don't actually have a specific defense card in our hand, I don't think. Which is too bad. Common tactic goes there. And we could adopt that, which would be good. Oh, okay, he didn't do aggression. He loaded another event. And it's a colonization event. A one that I would really like to have. I'm going to put that down. We have a three right now because of our lighthouse or whatever it is. Cartography. I'm going to bid and win it and get six minerals and three extra cubes, which means that waste isn't gonna be as much of an issue. This is really, I think, ideal for us right now. We'll be able to finish the wall. Um, I think wall is age one, so it's not about to go extinct. So when age two starts, all the age A stuff, the antiquity stuff, um, gets discarded. Unfinished wonders and cards in your hand from A get eliminated. So we didn't actually have to worry about the wall, but still, finishing it will give us a bit more strength. He's leveling up his swordman. Um, have you picked up any card? No, damn it. So knights are gonna be sitting here. That's very frustrating, because it'll take three for us to grab that. Um, we're gonna skip these aggressions. It might be worth doing that. Well, certainly we have to finish this. Plus one strength for each of your infantry and artillery. We only have the one. Um, 
St. Peter's Basilica is like super happiness, right? Lots of happy faces. If I do that, I mean, I can't grab knights. I, I, he might go after red, though. That might be the one outstanding thing. Because red's technically weaker right now. I can't do food. Um, we'd like to produce some stuff to not go to waste. And we might not be able to do that. Let's, okay, let's upgrade you. We can actually build a new one, because I don't need an idle one at all. and then put down St. Peter's Basilica. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fine. We, oh, we still have Hammurabi, so we could grab something else. Uh, which I think will be Breakthrough, because we'll be able to use it next turn on whatever we pick up, and I think that's gonna be great. We're gonna discard um, Plunder. New deposits, okay. The industrial age has just started. So we do lose Hammurabi now. Everyone loses their leader, which is interesting. Everyone is still, oh, someone lost a leader in hand. So red was just holding on to an obsolete leader. All right, you're building that up. We're gonna let this go until the start of my turn, but then we will be putting a cut in here. Sort of try to put a cut between each age. I realize this video is a little, a little shorter than normal just because age one tends to be a little lighter on decisions, but I think it's gonna be a good natural cut spot for things. Mm, yeah, probably something like that. So, in terms of evaluating our position, I don't know. I guess one of the advantages to waiting our turn, we can look at it, the thing. You want to pact. We both have an extra military action. If we attack each other, there's plus two strength. Um, no. That'll make it a lot easier for you to attack me. I mean, the plus one military action is nice, and maybe... Well, yeah, I'm the weakest right now, so... That's not great. Uh, these knights might be available for me, and picking that up is going to be great, both because it's two military strength per person, but also you get a um, you get the ability to adopt a few more interesting and potent tactics by having access to knights as well as infantry. Okay, that's going to be great. That's going to be really wonderful. Actually, we have one of those tactics as well. So we will put a cut in here. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Uh, do remember, YouTube is kind of stupid with subscriptions, so you might have to hit the bell icon to be properly notified of all the videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.